Should you major in computer science in 2021? 2020 definitely brought some, uh, I guess you could say terrible surprises. But about eight months ago, I released my Should You Major in Computer Science in 2020 video, where I covered a bunch of different stuff like classes you might take if you were gonna go to UCSD for computer science, what the sort of job outlook and average salaries looks like, and then my personal opinion. So in this video, we're gonna cover those topics again, but see on where some things may have changed. Oh, this bad boy? I didn't think you'd notice. I just want to thank my Aunt Steph, my Uncle Dave, and my cousin William for getting me this awesome mug for the holidays. Shout out to you guys. So first off, what sort of classes could you expect as a computer science major going into 2021? Well, not much is really different in terms of sort of the broad categories of classes you're going to take but it does vary based on the college you're gonna go to. So in my 2020 video, I covered classes, computer science classes that you would take if you're gonna be a computer science major at UCSD, which is the college I graduated from. But in this video, we're gonna go over classes you would take as a computer science major at Harvard. So at Harvard, to major in computer science as an undergraduate, you're gonna be taking between 10 to 12 computer science classes in addition to any of the general education requirements that you have to fulfill for your program. And for those people that are familiar with UCSD, when you see this 10 to 12 classes, you're like, wow, that seems like less, because it is. But you have to remember that Harvard is on semesters, whereas UCSD is on quarters or trimesters. So you'll end up taking a lot more classes at UCSD, but for shorter durations. So at Harvard, you take fewer classes, but the classes are just overall in longer duration, you know? So the classes you'll need are beginning with linear algebra, then you get a little bit of a choice between statistics slash probability and or multivariable calculus. Then you'll need two classes in basic software, and that's where the famous Harvard CS50 class comes into play, and you get the option of choosing CS50, then maybe CS51, 52, and then you'll need two theory courses. Now, computer science theory, it's definitely interesting. I remember I had to take, what was it? What was the class called? It was like theoretical computation or something like that. And you covered like Turing machines and non-deterministic problems, P and MP, very theoretical stuff. It was pretty hard, pretty hard class, but you'll need two theory classes such as introduction to theory theoretical computer science and or data structures and algorithms, and then followed by four technical electives. And now I've mentioned this before, but electives are sort of where you get to specialize in something that seems interesting. So with electives, if you really like artificial intelligence, you can sort of target artificial intelligence as sort of the, the field you wanna go into, or maybe you like web development, so you wanna take more web development, technical electives, or maybe you want more theory classes or anything like that. It, electives really give you the chance to explore the vast field of computer science. But for those four technical electives at Harvard, two have to be from different course groupings. So that means you have to take two computer science classes that have to deal with different subjects. So that would be like three artificial intelligence classes but you'd have to take maybe like a computer graphics class because graphics and artificial intelligence are in are in different categories. So basically you need to just make sure you take two different categories of computer science if you're lucky enough to be at Harvard. So now that you got sort of the idea of what a computer science major would take. Now remember, again, these are all in addition to general education requirements. So whatever other basic math requirements you might have, other general science requirements like physics or chemistry, maybe you have history requirements or writing requirements. So it's not just these classes, it's in addition to your pretty much other undergraduate classes that you need. And if you wanna see a different perspective on maybe what classes you take at UCSD, you can check out my eight months ago-ish video about should you major in computer science for 2020, where I cover all the classes you would take if you were studying at UCSD. So now we're getting on to the average salaries of the major as well as different career opportunities and just overall career outlook going into the future. So let's first look at different average salaries for different college majors according to Indeed from I think it was December 9th, 2020. So if we look, we can see that engineering 
Computer science and math are the top three. Now, these are all new graduate salaries, which is important to keep in mind. These aren't like the averages for that specific field, but rather it's measuring what are the new graduate salaries for people that majored in this. So once you're no longer sort of a new grad, I don't really know how they quantify that, maybe a year or two after you graduate, then you are not counted in this metric. Now, instead of just looking at new grad salary, we can look at career average salary and then career growth. Now, as a computer science major, there are like an absolute ton of careers you can actually go into. And if you are interested in all the different careers you can go into, I actually released two videos on that topic talking about all of the different careers that you can go into that are popular, giving you brief descriptions of what their responsibilities are as well as their average salaries. But for simplicity's sake, we're just gonna focus on becoming a software engineer slash software developer, whatever name you wanna choose because that's probably the most common and most direct path after computer science education is to become a software engineer or a software developer. I spilled my tea. So according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the median pay for a software developer in 2019 was $107,510 were about $51.69 per hour. Now those numbers could have definitely changed due to the sporadic nature of 2020, but we can look at some other sources now. I've noticed that depending on the source you look at, the numbers can sort of vary wildly. So the Bureau of Labor Statistics hasn't released their 2020 stats quite yet. So we're gonna look at ZipRecruiter instead because I found that ZipRecruiter actually had a semi-recent date. So I'm recording this actually January 1st. So happy new year of 2021 and let's hope it's better than last year. But as of December 24th, 2020, the average software developer salary in the US was $86,523. As you can see, that is a bit lower than the median pay. It is important to note that median and average are not the same metric. So ZipRecruiter is using average, whereas the Bureau of Labor Statistics is using median. So keep that in mind, as in the numbers are different. They're not too different, but they are considerably different, but they are using different metrics. So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're comparing them. But if we look at the overall job growth and outlook, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, we see that the number of software developer jobs in 2019 was about 1,469,200, but the overall job outlook over the next 10 years until 2029 is about 22% growth, which is like way faster than the average occupation, which I think is at 4% right now. So, and you can see how software developer jobs software engineer jobs, jobs working in tech, growing 22% over the next 10 years versus 4% of other op occupations. That's Kind of insane. So by 2029, the Bureau of Labor Statistics is estimating that about 316,000 more jobs, software developer jobs will be available. So that's about like 31,600 jobs every year. That's like 31,600 new software developer jobs being added every year in addition to all of the other jobs out there. So if we're just briefly looking at these stats, we can see that Becoming a software engineer or software developer and therefore majoring in computer science is, you know, seems pretty solid, at least for the foreseeable future. Now, what do I think you should do? Well, that'll depend on you. So I think it's really vital to study something that's sort of at the crossroads of passion and viability. So what I mean by that is unless money is no object to you, and then in that case, you know, you could kind of study whatever you want in college, but you basically want your college education to be some form of investment. And again, depending on your finances, that'll that'll vary per person. So if you're taking out a lot of student loans, maybe you're not bothered by student loans, but I, I was, I'm pretty bothered by student loans. You wanna make sure that your earning potential will meet up with your outstanding student loans. So you don't wanna be 40 years old still paying back your college loans. Like that is just a lot of undue stress. So that's what I mean by, f you know, finding those crossroads between passion and viability. What do you like, but what can also have like a high earning potential or, you know, just generally be really rewarding in its own right. So for me, I've loved technology and I feel like computer science was very much at the, the crossroads. So I had to sort of learn to like coding 
uh, and now I very much do like it. I didn't totally love it in the beginning, but again, it was at the crossroads of, okay, what's what's viable? Because, you know, I I do worry about finances. Uh, I have student loans. So what, what major is viable that has a high earning potential out of college? And then what do I actually like? And then eventually I was like, you know, computer science is pretty good. I It seems like I like it. I learned to like it more and it has you know, relatively high earning potential out of college. I'm not gonna sit here and say that I loved every minute of linear algebra and nonlinear programming because I literally did not. It was awful. But it did give me a very rewarding sense doing all that mental work, all that mental hard work. I've mentioned it before, but you should find something, some major, some, some field of study that gives you that sense of accomplishment and passion and rewardment. So for those wondering, I suggest at least sitting down, maybe making a pros and cons list and figuring out, okay, what college major is at the crossroads of my viability and passion? So if you don't have a lot of student loans, maybe you have very little, then the viability could be like on a different scale. It could be way lower. It doesn't need to be super viable because like it doesn't need to be. Like if you if you don't have student loans to pay back, then you just need money to live on. And at that point, the viability factor sort of goes down. And therefore, you can go more on the passion meter. You know, I don't I don't know what I'm doing here, but I feel like you get the, get the gist. Of it. But for me, I had a lot of student loans, so I had to aim for more higher viability in order to be in a, you know, financially responsible position going into the future. And I felt like computer science was a very responsible choice and very good. Like I really like computer science and I didn't always, but I had to learn to like it. And I, now I could say I actually genuinely, genuinely enjoy it. So, but if you are feeling forced or pressured to go into computer science when you really don't want to, I highly suggest checking out my why you shouldn't major in computer science video where I cover different routes to take and different things to consider and the downsides of being a computer science major. So if you're looking for a different perspective, definitely check out that video because no one should really have that feeling of being forced into something they, you know, don't want to study. Like, cause then you'll just be miserable whenever you go into your career. I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Being a computer science major is hard. I don't want to say that it was super easy uh, because it wasn't, I found it very hard, you know, I had to spend hours and hours going to tutoring sessions, teaching assistant discussions. I spent like eight plus hours in like consecutive time, like blocks in a computer science lab, finishing homework assignments. I was stressed a lot. I was constantly focused on grades. You know, I missed sometimes about hanging out with my friends. You know, those are all things to consider. Now your experience is gonna vary based on you and what school you go to and how hard your classes are and and how good you are just at coding you know it's just something to consider there are there are downsides to to studying any particular field so just important to keep that in mind and a lot of people ask me in the comments like hey should i major in computer science i don't know if this is right for me it might be too hard and i always say like if it sounds like something you want to do and sounds like something interesting go for it. I mean, you can always try it. And I feel like everyone can learn computer science and become a good programmer and learn math and become a good mathematician and you do all those sorts of things with the right amount of dedication. Now, it might come easier to some people than others, but as long as you have the determination, I feel like anyone can learn anything and become good at anything. But from my position right now, looking back, you know, was it all worth it? I would say yes thank you all so much for watching and happy holidays happy new year hopefully 2021 proves to be at least a little bit better than 2020 thank you guys all so much for your continued support hit a lot of milestones this year almost 1400 subscribers it's hard to believe uh again thank you guys so much for the support if you have any suggestions for videos leave them in the comments below uh, as well as any questions you have for me. Again, shout out to my aunt Steph, my uncle Dave, and my cousin William for the awesome Michael mug. It's really, really cool, really awesome. So thanks guys so much for that gift. You can always count on bad British accents from your boy over here. Tune into one of my past videos, and my past self would thank you dearly, and tune into one of my future videos my future self would thank you dearly as well. If you want to check out any of the videos I mentioned, like my 
computer, should you major in computer science in 2020 video to get a different perspective on classes you might take at UCSD. You can find that in the description as well as my two computer science major career paths videos. If you're wondering about the careers that are available to a computer science major, as well as maybe some reasons why you shouldn't major in computer science because it's always important to consider the opposite side as well to know if you're making a good decision or not. That's all from me. Hopefully I'll see you in a future one. Bye-bye.